Hey folks, Dave here. Uh, I appreciate you stopping by to check out another video and I hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing good. I wanted to do a short tutorial on the uh, trace function in Lightburn and uh, I've seen some other people demonstrate it, but I always like to, to put out my understanding of it and then the viewers can take a look at it and if I'm off somewhere they can let me know. And then the video package with the comments will have a complete record of how this function works. And I think that'll help more people. So we're going to start with a, uh, a uh, photo, a PNG. Uh, Lightburn will accept uh, TIFF and JPEGs and many other uh, formats. But we're going to start with a PNG. And I'll put a link to this down in the description. So remember, you can scroll in and out with your uh, mouse wheel and you can push down and move the entire canvas around. So I'm just going to make this a little smaller uh, to make it easier to work with. And um, so a lot of times I'm looking for, uh, I like public domain and free vectors, but I, I don't always find the exact one I'm looking for. And Lightburn will allow you to just, if you find a photo that's close, then you can download that photo and take a vector from it. So that's what we're going to do. So on the photo, you can right click and select the trace image, or you can go up to tools and trace image here, or you can use the uh, shortcut of Alt T. Okay, so that's going to bring up this window. And you have these dials and controls down here at the bottom. Uh, we'll start with the fade image because you can see the lines a lot better. The lines is where Lightburn has initially tried to trace this out and then to give us the ability to fine tune that. So we're going to hit the fade image down at the bottom. And it allows us to see these lines better. So we can tell that some of the lines we need are missing. And we're going to be able to put those back. So first off, this over to the left, this ignore less than is in reference to pixels. So if you had uh, a lot of times you'll download a, a vector and it'll have, or not a vector, but a photo. And it'll have some things in it you don't want. There may be some speckles or some lines or something. Well, this will ignore anything less than two pixels. But if, if you have a lot of trash, then you can just increase that number. <coughs> Excuse me. You can just increase that number up and it'll get rid of uh, whatever's in there. Uh, the smoothness refers to the uh, the lines and how Lightburn tries to merge similar items together. So you can get closer and let me make this larger here. And you can see that the, the photo being pixelated is just a, like a series of rectangles and it it makes like stair steps. And then Light burn will try to smooth those out. And you can adjust, I believe the limit for this is a zero uh, up to 1.33. And on these turns, a zero would make this a sharp angle. Let's just do it. We'll put a zero in here. And then you can see how it made that much sharper than it was before. And if we go to the limit, which is 1.33, it'll round it back off. And the default is 1, which uh, in most cases you'll find is, uh, is adequate. Okay, so we now will we'll try to adjust with the cutoff and the threshold. And you'll just have to play with these and see if it gives you the result you want. So as you adjust these, just keep checking your photo. 
and see if it's where you want it to be. And you can tell the mouth partially has been left out. And I have found typically it's better to adjust the threshold and to get the result you're looking for. Sometimes you will lose part of the photo, but if it's not an important part or something that you can add to it, like right here, you can see that the the writing, the I love you, is going to be lost as we get the better image. And But as long as you get a good outline to create that vector, then you can, you know, you can use the text tool to put the, put the writing back in. So Lightburn also gives you um, an optimize button down at the bottom. And you can use that to um, adjust if you if you don't get exactly what you you're looking for. And I'm not going to pretend to know everything about this, uh, but I will give you uh, a link to the documentation down in the description, and that'll help you uh, to learn a little more about it. Uh, but practice makes perfect. So do a bunch of these, and if you find online that there's a uh, vector available with the photo then you can always make your own vector from the photo and compare it to the vector that's online and see how close you get. So um, let's uh, go ahead and click OK. So here is our vector and it is separated out. You just pull it over and then you can delete the original photo, at least I always do. So the first thing from here, but like I said, you can go back and add the, uh, the writing here, but the main thing is to save this vector. So I'm going up to File and Export, and that will allow you to uh, save as an SVG. We're just going to call this Bad. All right, so we have bear saved now. And to save yourself some trouble later, you can go ahead and turn this into a, uh, a light burn project. Okay, so you have your vector. Now you want to uh, trace it or offset it so you can have a, a background of it. So we're just going to do one uh, one millimeter click OK pull this out and we're going to do it again same thing and then you can pull this out delete and now you've got a background you can put over here to Cut it out. So you can go ahead and make the original a uh, engrave. Then you can put your background on it. And now you can save it. I'm going to group it together first. Right click and group. And now you can just save this as a uh, light burn project. And you'll have the SVG and the uh, project. We call that bear also. And so you have both now, the vector and you have a, a light burn project saved and then you'll be able to use it in the future in any way you, you want to. Now if you were actually cutting this out now, be sure to go over to the top right and select your engrave and move it above the cut line so you don't make a mess. Okay folks, I think that's it. And uh, Again, I appreciate you stopping by and watching uh, the video. And uh, there's, uh, if you're new to the channel, you can uh, go check out the playlist for uh, for tutorials and for uh, novice uh, projects. And I think you'll find something that you would enjoy doing. 
So y'all take care and uh, check back off with the new videos. And we'll see y'all next time. Thank you.